So you just made a great case for Justin Fields. Um, but you think that the pick is going to be Trey Lance. Explain that to me. All right. Like I said, I don't watch a lot of TV. I'm just out and about and I'll catch what I catch. And I'm a big storyline guy. And I've watched the media do this for years. And like um, Crocker was saying earlier, he was like, bro, you could read between the lines. If you know what to hear and what to listen for, you could kind of read between the lines. Now, when the process first started and we moved up, of course, me and you were like, why do you move all the way up to three? And we wanted pits and everything. But, yeah. you know, we're really trying to build a team and scared money don't make money. I don't understand that. But if you are going to twist my arm from one of these quarterbacks, OK, as, as time has gotten closer. I've heard everything from every prospect, like I've heard Zach Wilson, BYU, um, slight in size, daredevil attributes. Um, he has all the arms, throws off platform, didn't really flourish until his last year. It, it, you hear those stories. Then you hear, um, then you hear about the whole um, ADHD thing. That, that's what I'm talking about. You you start hearing all these little things, and then you hear rich about kid, this, rich got a kid, rich kid, mom, all these things. Yeah. Went to one school. They told him no. Then he was like, so I'm like, all right. And then you get we already kind of spoke on Justin Fields. And then I'm, I just heard that Trevor Lawrence says that football isn't the end all be all for him. Not exactly what you want to hear from someone who's going to go number one. Exactly. And then, like, then you got Mac Jones with a DUI. Bro, and the man is embarrassed of his name. I, I, I know that doesn't mean anything to anyone, but for me, that just shows just a, a, even if it's a slight level of insecurity, bro, like, that's your name. Like, I understand that might be your, your nickname that Jerry Judy gave you when you were in. <laughs> like, Jerry Judy probably like, yo, I know you're making fun of me. This is my roommate. His name is Mac. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone calls him Mac from now on. So that's funny. Like, as far as that, bro, like I don't really see like Mac Jones, non-athletic, doesn't really look good in pads, like the guy said. Like that that's not a big deal. But like, bro, the only thing he has above everyone is his process, and his processing is I see it, I rip it. Yeah. But how difficult could that be if it's At Alabama? Alabama. So those evaluations like Ryan Fitzpatrick does the same thing, but if you do that in the NFL, there's going to be games where you throw three picks. Exactly, bro. Yeah. And Ryan Fitzpatrick, he's due for one of the like he'll have the two oh. games, eight touchdowns and seven picks in the next game. That's right. So you don't want that as a quarterback. You don't want a daredevil like that, and you don't want someone who basically flies by the seat of their pants in the NFL. Like it's very structured. You have to stay within structure, and that's why Zach Wilson is out for me right now. Because can Kyle rein him in? Yeah. And we, we talked about habits. That's his habit. He's a, he's a daredevil. He has that far, I'm going to make it happen type thing. And yeah. that could, it could work in, in the division football you were playing. But when everyone, they even, bigger and faster and stronger than you, yeah, they even the playing field in the NFL. Yeah. So, yeah. So what do you like about Lance? Why do you think Lance is going to be the one? Because oh. he's the one that doesn't have necessarily the, the, uh, well, the narrative against him. I went to the, through all the storylines, and then you get yeah. to Lance, and then you get Dosagis, the most interesting prospect ever, bro. Right. Like, the most interesting guy in the process. Like, the yeah. only thing you have on him is his one year of playing, but everything else is off the charts. His intangibles, Crocker made a very good point about the man wanting it. Like, yeah. I'm, I was like that. I wasn't highly recruited in high school, but the only what what drove me was I knew I was good. It just you know, I was, a, I was kind of a knucklehead and I kind of just was like, I'm just going to get into football just off my talent alone. And then I got to a school because, you know, Miami, we, we produce players down here and yeah. we six, eight football. So when I got to the high school I went to, which was a big high school, Central High, Central High, and bro, everyone's good. So yeah. It wasn't like, because where I was, I was better than everyone. It was like big fish, small pond. Mm -hmm. I got to go to the ocean. Everyone's good now. Yeah. So it's like work ethic sets you apart. Yes. Like, bro, I, I, I used to go to bed, wake up, football's on my mind, bro. Like, yeah. All day, every day. So the fact that he he took his year off, but he put in the work to learn defensive schemes in the NFL, that shows you the guy wants it. I don't see the same drive. And this is just me. I test and just looking at people. Mac Jones doesn't look like that type of person. Um. Trey, um, Justin Fields might have it, but 
don't know. Like, it's just something about what bothers me is the whole Georgia thing. Like, what happened at Georgia? Yeah. I know it wasn't skill set. I know it wasn't skill for skill that Fromm beat you out. So what really happened is like that got swept under the rug. So yeah. I don't know. My wife told me I talk too much. I ramble. No, you're doing great. I'm listening. I, I, the thing about Trey Lance, I wrote him off at first because of his experience. I was like, there's no way a guy with 300 throws is going to work out. Mm-hmm. But then it's like Cam Newton had 300 throws, and the difference was a year of JUCO. So maybe we should look a little closer into, into Trey Lance. Oh, whoops. Hold on. I was trying to mute you real quick. Um, and then with the thing with Trey Lance is like, it seems like he has all the things you can't coach. He's huge. He's a great athlete. He's got a strong arm. He's extremely smart, but beyond that, he makes really good decisions. He protects the football. And, uh, I mean, it just has like all the things you can't coach. The final thing, the drive, the chip on your shoulder that most people don't ever get. And if they do get it, they get it at like 35 or something like that. After it's like the dream hasn't worked out. You got it at 19. It's something in you. Like me, my whole thing was, I wanted to capitalize on the gifts that I got. Like you never want to squander your athletic gifts or whatever gift God gives you. Don't squander it. So that was my whole thing. I was a big kid, fast, everything, always been number one picked in every sport that I played. So it was like, bro, I, I, I can't just squander this. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sure Trey Lance understands that. He's like, bro, I, I went, they tried to turn me into a linebacker. I know my worth. I know that I'm good. So that drive alone and that shows you it's in them and people like that, they want to be coached. Like, yes. Like uh, real, they real want to be coached. They, As opposed they, to they, someone who's like, yo, I got this. Which I got is what, this. That's the which worst is what Jim Flora said that Josh Rosen says all the time. I got this. Every time you bring up Rosen, it's like, bro, I think of, um, you know who I think of when I think of Josh Rosen, I think of Jake, the snake. Uh, yeah. Yeah, all the talent. He just went to the wrong organization. Yeah, (laughs) so like, bro, like Josh Rosen is so mad. I just don't. But um, yeah, he's off topic. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like every time I start thinking about it, I'm like, oh, all right. But Trey Lance, like this is the like I, I I said in a comment the other day. He's probably the most moldable prospect that seen in a long time and what i mean by that he doesn't he's not imprinted by anything right now like you have mac jones he has the nick saban alabama imprint on him then you have urban meyer with justin fields and i'm not going to get into uh, trevor and and everything but when i mean by imprint like he he's just some big clay mm-hmm. kyle shanahan is what we think he is the quarterback guru the quarterback whisperer this is it. This is your time to paint your Mona Lisa. This is the time to 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 mold the guy in your image. Mm-hmm. You basically gonna give him all the tools that he needs. Right now, he's just basically like just putty in your hand. So, all right. all right. Everyone says Kyle is a genius, but Kyle played receiver, right? Yes, he did. Why did we give Kyle like I'm I'm just a serious question and not to bash him or anything? Why did Kyle get the um the quarterback whisperer title? Like how did he get that? The Google title? I don't know because of the one year he had with 30-year-old Matt Ryan. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, bro, like a quarterback guru, and y'all could correct me if I'm wrong. You're supposed to be able to take whatever someone gives you or something that is functional. And, and bring the best out of it. In. Best, the best out of it. Yeah, you're not supposed to get something that's already done. And right, and, you know what I mean. So this is your- and honestly, that's what he did. That's what his dad did. His dad never really developed really. developed anything. Yeah. So this is your chance. This is your chance to prove. And the reason I said the whole thing, what did he play receiver? I played receiver. We think a certain way. We're like, we're, yeah, I call us divas, but it's just. You you recognize you're the nuclear, re, you're the nuclear result on the field. Like yes, you can score at any point on the field. Yeah. Think out of any position, you're the most dangerous on the field. That's right. Argue me about this and that, but there's one guy standing between you and the end zone. End of story. Exactly, bro. Yeah. So now when I go into the receiver mindset and I'm thinking of how Kyle sees football, 
he's an aggressive person. Like he, why do you think like every it's a it's a running joke in the 49er community, but he drafts a receiver every year. That's just how we are. We understand the 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 importance of that position and getting that right guy can make or break an offense. So when I, the only reason I bring up this in the quarterback correlation, like I could tell Kyle looks at Jimmy in the in a in the prism of how a receiver sees a quarterback. And he's looking at Jimmy like, I could be open, but this guy, he won't see me or he'll see me and his arm couldn't get it to me. Or it's late. Yeah. Exactly. It, and there's that hitch. And that's the hitch that um, Justin Fields has. He has the hitch. A little hesitation. Bro, exactly, bro. And that's going to hurt you. Zach Wilson, Mac Jones, they let it rip. Trey, 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 um, Trey Lance. Lance. Rip. Yep. Oh. That, that's gonna hurt like the 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 arm and the the hesitation and thought like that's what hurt Tannehill to me in Miami. Mm. Tannehill had all the athletic ability, had the arm, had everything. What Tannehill would do would be on third down and 13 when we really need him to throw that ball and the first read wasn't there, he would have a lane to run and he would hitch up and like mm. bro, run or throw it, and he'll take yeah. the sack yeah. or yeah. throw the pick. Because yeah. the corner had time to to get back into the play, so that hitch hurts you in the NFL. And I hope he he could um, get coached out of that. But again, like back to Kyle, like bro, this is your time to show everybody that you got it, bro. Like you got the perfect piece. Like I'm looking at the Patrick Mahomes scenario, and it's not playing out the same way. Patrick Mahomes was seen as the afterthought after Tr- Trubisky and Watson. Watson got it because of the national championship recognition. But they were kind of just calling Pat Mahomes a gunslinger. He had all the attributes. And I'm a big intuition guy. I, I go with my gut a lot. And I tried, like, like you. I threw, I, I kind of, I called him an intriguing prospect, but I kind of like. Um, yeah, I wrote him off. I was like, Trey Lance, nah, that's too much of a project. But as time has gotten closer, I've warmed up to the idea because I'm just looking at his attributes and. Next to Jimmy, he offers just right now, offers you a bigger arm, a more mobile, durable prospect than Jimmy. And, bro, we're not trying to invent the wheel here. If Jimmy does just a few things, bro, we win a Super Bowl, bro. If Jimmy could stay durable, if Jimmy can make a, a throw, uh, his arm is capable to make the throw, and he's not hitching up, bro. Like, Jimmy is not terrible. And Crocker made another good point. We could have got rid of Jimmy and saved – the money, right? Why would we keep him? Yeah. Why would we keep him if he, if unless we know that we need him as a bridge, like Alex Smith was for Mahomes? Yeah. Could bring in a Trey Lance a year later or halfway through the season if that's what it calls for. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs>